just, uh, just still working on the will. What's up? What's up? Our little brother is still missing. Why? I mean, you left him there. I'm not making any of this up. Oh, God, why won't you believe me? Well, they're saying it's a virus. You sure you and Sam didn't just hallucinate all this ghost stuff when you were there? So, what did I hallucinate my broken leg and the claw marks on my back to? No, come on, that's not what I'm saying, okay? I'm just saying this sounds an awful lot like Sam's big imagination going into overdrive here. Because having an imagination is such a terrible thing, Dad. All right, come on. Look, after all this shit I've been going through with the will, you really think that I still regret Dad's death? The only thing I regret about our parents dying is that I didn't get to tell Dad to go F himself before he died. Okay, now, I will go to Tasmania and I will bring our little brother home. You understand me? Fine. Just bring him home. Fine. Why isn't the government talking about this? We know Tasmania is quarantined, sure, but what's being quarantined? What if it's all just a cover-up? Or worse, what... What if we're dealing with something the military doesn't even understand? Oh, come on. The entire state of Tasmania evacuated for what? Testing? People have died. No. People have gone missing. Have you seen any bodies? I don't know. No, maybe they found something. I'm telling you. Maybe we're dealing with an enemy here that can't be seen.
Brian today? Is he gonna meet you out here if you can't find Sam? No. Oh, I don't know where he is. It's like he just doesn't even care. He used to be the sweetest guy ever. Like he would cry if someone killed a bird. Oh God, he's just become such an asshole. I can't even remember the last time he said I love you. What the hell is that? I don't, I don't know. The news calls it a virus. But Sam explains it differently. January 24th, I received a package from Sam two weeks ago, asking me to return to our family's old vacation spot. His message in a bottle for humanity, he calls it. First things first, if you're going out of their territory, you have to make yourself invisible to them. Ash from the dead conceals your presence when they are near. Never leave home without it. Surround the perimeter of wherever you may camp with the ash as well. It helps throw off your scent. and make sure not to stay in any one spot longer than a night or two. If you're ever unsure of their presence, remember that they communicate with one another using some sort of radio wave. You can pick up their chatter using a low frequency radio, but very rarely will you actually hear them. More commonly, you'll pick up ghost radio waves. This will let you know you are in the clear. And if your radio should fail you for any reason, there is one other step you can take to observe their presence. Any camera with infrared can pick them up. They seem to be forms of light that the naked eye can't see. Some type of energy. They don't seem to have a physical presence, but perhaps almost a form of light radiation or a soul. If you are here in Tasmania, you are in enemy territory. Never let your guard down. The frequency of them seems to depend on how many people have died in the area. And don't confuse this with where people are buried. Graveyards actually seem to be safe houses. And in closing, he explains, keep any use of electricity to a minimum as it seems to attract or even spawn them. They seem to feed off of it. He didn't seem sure who would receive this message, but for some reason it found me. is true. He claimed he'd keep moving and survive for as long as he could until he was rescued. Do 
I still have time to find him. Who said I was 
said I was a bum? Who said I was a bum? Well, just an easy go and die, and things are easy come. A bum a nickel now and then to keep me full of rum. I'll know I'm a hobo, but who said I was a bum? My coat is worn, my shoes are torn, there's holes in both my toes. And what is worse, I always serve the blossom on my nose. With a glance, you see my pants are baggy as a knee. They're worn the thin, I feel the wind blow. Now they ain't nothing worries me, I'm mighty glad of that. There's never nothing on my mind except the dirty hat. Who said I was a bum? Who said I was a bum? Don't think that I am a lonesome guy because I look so glum. I've got a lot of goofy friends that keep me on the hook. Uh, so I'm a hobo, but who said I was a bow? somehow made the electricity come alive. It seems to react to a person's presence at will. Or is this just the virus? Sam and stay safe. I'm coming. Hey, 
January 26th. He began to stay closer to the sea, away from civilization, as he attempted to figure out what they actually were. His research is hard to understand. He goes on and on about several things, such as interdimensional beings, shadow people, and even aliens. Claimed that legends and history seem to blend, to intertwine, and even lose focus. He believed that ghosts were simply a generalization, or a misanalysis of that. And they would prey on the energy of misfortune and suffering. They could come to our side through some sort of portals. He seemed to think that there are these portals or Hot spots all over the world where the spirits can come to our side. Is Tasmania really one of those places? He concluded that these portals explain the areas of the world where the foulness and suffering of humanity never seem to clear. Final note was merely a question. Will there always be a dark cloud over these places? Or can the portals be closed? Can the light return? Where are you, Sam? Hitler knows that he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. But if we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age, made more sinister. So these are your ghosts, also. <laughs>
January 28th. For some reason, Sam has decided to go to the most haunted island in Australia. I have no ordinary explanation for why Sam would go there, of all places.
January 29th. I have one week left to find Sam, but I still need to cross eight kilometers of ocean to get him. Now, if I'm going into enemy territory, I need to find a way to stop whatever these things are if I come into contact with one again. back, whoever finds this, EMP is how you stop them. It seems to send them back to wherever they come from. Hope trumps fear, Sam. I'm coming.
try and rescue us. There's no escape. Help yourselves and evacuate from Tasmania at all costs. January 31st. I've determined that either Sam is still somewhere on this island, or he's at least been here very recently. This distress call seems to be getting clearer the closer I get to the mountain. So tomorrow I'm going to try to attempt to hike to the summit and see if I can find the source of the signal. I think it's what Sam would have done. And it's really the only lead I have at this point, so... A boat leaves in five days. Sam, come on. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Come on. Oh, no, God damn it. Come on. Come on. No, man. Come on, wake up, Sam. Come on, wake up, wake up. One, two, three. Come on, wake up. Come on, you can't come this far and just stop, Sam. Come on. Come on. One, two, three. Come get me, assholes. Come get me. Brian. Brian. Come on. This is the best you got, guys. Screw you. Brian, it's me. Where the hell are you? Bullshit, it's you. Mariah Island, like you told me. No, I told you to stay away from Mariah Island. That there's something there. A doorway. A doorway? Then where are you? On the other side. I went through. That's funny because I'm looking at your dead body right now. What? Just found it lying here next to the river. Oh, shit. Yeah. I followed the distress call up the river and found a cave. But there's something in that cave, Brian. It's, it's some kind of electrical doorway to another place. I think it's where they came from, like our old house. That's where I am now. Why the hell did you go through it? I thought it was mom or dad. I learned to apologize. Apologize? Mom is dead. 
dad is dead. No, you're dead. You still really only think in black and white after seeing what we've seen. Tell science to piss off for just a second and believe me, Brian. I have no idea what I've seen. I don't even know what the hell I'm talking to right now, okay? All I know is that Sam is dead. I have no idea what the hell I'm gonna do now. Keep going. What? If you're going through hell, keep going. Are you really there? Yes, but something is coming from here. I think it's, it's Dad, or what was in Dad. I need your help, Brian. How am I supposed to help you if you're dead? Go through the doorway. Find our own house. What the hell are you talking about? You'll wake up in a pool. Go through the woods and fall size for home, through the abandoned buildings. Please, Brian. Sam. 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 So you're alive, huh? You know, I used to see ghosts when I was a kid too. Back before you were even born. I never respond to them or anything. I just didn't want them to actually know I could hear them, you know? I thought maybe I could trick them or play stupid. I don't even think I actually ever knew what they were until right now. And the last time I saw him, I was probably, I don't know, four or five. But what I saw was you looking exactly like you do right now. And all you'd ever say to me was, save me. Over and over. I don't know if you really are Sam or not. I don't know if this is a trap or not. I'm coming for you. All of you. And I'm gonna send every last one of you back to where you belong. This message is from Molly Everett. Her address is 4805 Chariot Lane, Sonora, California. Molly, if, if you are watching this, it means I've failed and that both Sam and I are dead. I know that you had a really hard time growing up. And I know I was never there for you when I should have been. And I know that you've been mad at me for taking so long to come out here, down here to try and save our brother, but a classic dad move. The problem with the will was that he didn't even leave us anything. He gave everything to some guy, some friend of his, and I've been down here for a month trying to convince this guy to give me some money so I can afford to save our brother. But, it's okay. <laughs> you do get this, Molly. Please, just don't be afraid. Okay, here, it's the easiest emotion to have. You know, that's why Dad always used it. That's why he was always addicted to it. <laughs> He'd always use it on us whenever his life wasn't going his way. <laughs> and just nothing when we were kids, when we were growing up, nothing has ever been your fault, Molly. <laughs> Okay? Don't let Dad's weakness ruin you. Don't, just don't let his bullshit ruin your life. Okay? Because you're better than that. And Mom and Dad were not our family. We were our family. Just you, Sam, and I. That's it. And it always will be. Just
just let their bullshit go and go live your life. Because you're always the smartest of us and you're always the best of us. <laughs> and I should have told you more, but I just never did. <laughs> so please go do something great, Molly. Because <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> and if you're looking for Dad's ashes, I've taken him in an effort to finally try to use him for something good for once. I'm gonna use him to help me save our brother. <laughs> Goodbye, Molly. Sam. Sam? Before he takes me again. 
who, Mom? Listen to me. Your device will not work as it is. It's not powerful enough yet to destroy him. What are you talking about? It needs more energy. You must use my soul as the catalyst. What do you mean? Take my necklace. Now you have all that I am. Place that in your machine when you activate it. Use me as your power source. I don't understand. Brian, I am his counterbalance. You have to do this. It has to be you. Or we'll never be free. But if I do this, what happens to you? Will you be gone forever? Nothing's gone, Brian. It's just not there anymore. Honey, I am so sorry for everything you kids had to go through. You must do this so that I can finally help you. It's the only way. I'm so proud of you, Brian. I love you, Brian. I love all of you. Save me. Sam, we 
when he'd see things his father couldn't understand, he'd become a punching bag. This is the dreaded room where he'd pray every night, not for the safety of others, but the demise of his own father, praying that one day he wouldn't have to wear long sleeved shirts for the rest of his life to hide his secrets. Where, oh where was his big brother? bedroom. She thought the more toys she had, the more friends she'd have. Unfortunately, all they ever did was trap her in an emotional prison and constantly remind her there was no way out. She became deaf to advice, trapped in her own world. No way Brian would ever come home to save them. He'd never be her hero again. But not least, the oldest child, Brian. He was always so quiet, they said. He handled their troubled childhood the best, they said. Brian was the strong one, the devil's advocate. Nothing ever got to Brian. No one would ever expect Brian to kill his own parents. I didn't kill them. Dead is dead, Brian. It was an accident. Nobody was gonna miss them. Except poor little Brian. What are the odds, people, that some kooky eggheads open a door to another world and Brian here would enter it after doing something so bad? It wasn't my fault. Such a shocking moment to change the Everett family forever! But stay tuned, folks. After the break, we're going to the most terrifying room in the house. Daddy's room. It wasn't my fault. Hey Sam, it's me. Look, I... I'm really sorry I didn't show up to the funeral today, but... I just couldn't bring myself to be there. And I know you and Molly needed me, I'm sure especially today of all days, but... There's something... I need to tell you, I... Look, I saw Mom and Dad the night they died. You know, it had been years, and I figured I'd try to patch things up with them, and see if I could salvage anything, but... When I saw them, Dad started drinking, and she started hitting Mom. I, I couldn't take it anymore, so I, I tried to make him stop, but... Of course he wouldn't. And I tried to take Mom away, but... She wouldn't come with me. We just let her get in the car with Dad, watch them both drive away. I knew how drunk Dad was. I couldn't come today because... because I let her parents die. Just because I was angry. Because I love you guys more than anything. I hope someday you can understand why I did what I did because... my place in the world is just to protect both of you from people like them. I'm so sorry, Sam. God, I'm so sorry. Goodbye. Apologize finally for what you did to us. I will destroy all of you. You cannot destroy us, nor can you create us. But soon you will become us. You will all be down here. Your sister, your brother, 
your friends, everyone you've ever known. You will all come down here. That's interesting. What you just said. That you can either be created or destroyed. Because on the other hand, electricity, which is what it seems like you things feed off of down here, actually can be destroyed. <laughs> you do not have the power. Many have tried before you, but this is the way of things. For millennia's past, and millennia's more, you all come down here. You know what I think? I think Sam was right. I think that these portals are all over the place. I think there was probably even one near this very house when we were kids, wasn't there? You've been with us forever, haven't you? And now you're just afraid of losing us. You're just afraid of losing our fear. You think you could destroy me with that? Seems simple enough. I mean, after all, how do you turn off the lights? Just press the off switch, right? Foolish boy, you think it is that simple? Yeah. It is that simple. I only have one thing left to say to you. From the very, very bottom of my heart. Fuck you, Dad.
Amen.